In this issue of Real Magic, John Lovick tells Rob Zabrecki about the creative path that helped him create his persona, Handsome Jack. After about two years of being very obsessed with magic and, you know, really learning as much as I could in those two years and being completely obsessed with it, reading every book I could and buying tricks and practicing, uh, I moved back to L.A., uh, started going to the Magic Castle, um, eventually became a member of the castle, started hanging out there, meeting magicians, and um, all the, my friends that I was hanging out with the castle started auditioning to perform at the castle and getting booked. Mm -hmm. And I thought... Well, I don't want to be the only one of my friends that, you know, doesn't perform at the castle. So I put together an act and after about a year auditioned and started getting booked. And that's that's basically the story of how Handsome Jack was born. Great. That's that's exactly what I want to talk about. It's that pro that that year mm -hmm. as you're developing the character, yeah. how did all these things kind of come together for you and and who those other people were and what that time frame was like yeah. and even the, the years if you can Well this would have been Approximately 90, 1996, approximately. Yeah. Um, maybe a little earlier than that. But like I said, I thought, I'm going to put together an act. I'm going to audition to perform in the parlor. Parlor? Yes, because I like coming, I think largely because of my theatrical background and acting in plays, the formality of parlor and stage felt more naturally to me than the sort of intimacy and less formal aspect of most close up performance. I like being on stage under proscenium, the audience is sitting there, I'm talking, they're listening. Keep them away from me. Keep them away. Not too close. You shut up and you pay attention. That's your job. The uh, barrier. Yeah. Uh, that just felt more... And, and, you know, writing, you know, scripts and memorizing them and presenting them like a monologue in a play, that's what I knew. And so that's, that's what, um, like I said, I was comfortable with. Mm -hmm. um, so I was putting together an act to audition in the parlor, and I had an idea that I would do all tricks where magical stuff happened, but it was magical stuff I wasn't in control of. Like, things would happen, but it's not what I meant to happen. Mm -hmm. So I had four or five or six tricks like that, um, thinking that would be fun. And my persona that I was thinking about would be sort of a, if this is not a contradiction in terms, of sort of a waspy Woody Allen if such a thing is possible. Uh, not oh, it is possible. <laughs> okay. you, you're, you're, we're, I think you've given us that gift. Yes. Sort of a, a waspy <laughs> Woody Allen, not exactly a, you know, a nerd and not exactly a bumbler, but you know, uh, that, was, that was the idea for the act. And so I put together five or six tricks that were all fit that category. And after doing them for a couple of months, I sat and uh, uh, evaluated, okay, it's what's, what's working well in the act and what is not working so well. And the trick that was getting the best response was a win a date with Mr. Magic trick where an audience member comes up and gives a, gets a chance to win a prize and the prize is a date with me. Mm -hmm. And the, the joke is that I've rigged the game so she will automatically win no matter what. And at the end I say, so to win your date just uh, show us the card and boom, it's the wrong card, it has somehow magically changed. And so again a magic thing happened but it wasn't the magic thing I wanted to happen. And, and, and you know that's how it end. Like somehow something magically happened to screw up my master plan. To, mm -hmm. uh, and so that was for whatever reason that trick was 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 getting the best response. So I thought, okay, what's getting the worst response? And there was a trick that I just couldn't get a good reaction from. So I cut that trick and said, what trick would work well with the win a date trick? And I put in another trick and I did it for a while and those tri two tricks did work well and I thought okay what trick is getting the least reaction and I cut that one and added something that would go well with these two and eventually over the course of the year I became Handsome Jack. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I was trying to go in that direction but every time I'd change it you know I'd, I'd shift until I was going in the exact opposite direction that I intended. And if you had told me at the beginning of the year, at the end of the year, you'll be performing as Handsome Jack, Male Model Magician, I would have said, you're out of your mind. I would have said, there's no way that's going to happen. That's not possible. That sounds stupid. That's not my kind of humor. It's not the kind of thing I would do. But the lesson there was, pay attention to the audience. Pay attention. They're going to give you feedback about what they like and what they don't like and what works and what doesn't work. And you have to... Uh, embrace that one way or the other. Also in issue 49, Kainoa Harbottle discusses fallacies. The fallacy I want to talk about today is one of my favorites, known as bifurcation. Bifurcation. All it is is the either-or fantasy. 
And the best example of this is the, the, the sentence, you're either for us or against us. And it's the idea that you have either A or B, you don't get to make a choice except for those two. When in reality, you should think about things as something like it's either A or Z, and there's a whole alphabet in between of choices that you could make, that they're, that they're possible for you. So anytime someone gives you an either or, the important thing to think is, maybe this is an and also. It's not an either or, it's an and also. I apply this to magic a lot uh, in terms of creativity in general with magic, just in terms of creativity. Because if you think, well, I either have to do it this way or that way, you're going to box yourself into a corner. You're limiting your choices. So if you think, well, if there's an and also here, if there are other options here, that's going to give you the creativity that you're going to need. Doc Eason shares strategies on how to start a career in restaurant and bar magic. Catalina takes her turn at mind tripping. And Tyler Erickson returns with Stronger Magic. In this issue, Tyler discusses natural movement and the relationship between the hands and the eyes. So if I'm looking at something here and then looking up at you, that's very easy to see when my eyes shift because my hand and my face are very close together. But if this were down and I did the same thing and you were close to me, there's no way you would know that my eyes are changing from one point to another. So what we do is we will use more head movement. If I look up, if I use a little kick to the chin, that peripherally is much more available to you, and so you're much more likely to notice that I've gone from looking at my hand to looking at you, in which case I'm able to take you up to my face and then move you to the next area as the way we like to do things. As always, we've got three tricks to teach you. In this issue, they're from Ryan Schlutz, Bill Satino, and Kyle Purnell. All you have to do uh, is you have to shake them. You shake Snackman to play. Okay. And uh, you have to give your own sound effects because it doesn't come with it. It's just a piece of paper. Oh, okay. <laughs> and the sound effects go waka, 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 waka. Mm -hmm. So watch Snackman. Don't take your eyes off of it. And he'll go uh, waka, 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 waka. And you'll actually swear that he's kind of creeping up the card, eating the dots. Waka, 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 until he gets to that snack. And then when he eats the <laughs> snack, you'll swear that he actually moved right up the card. Go ahead and rub him. Make sure that... Yeah, he doesn't come off. All this and much, much more.